Hi kids, I'm Storytime Pup, and welcome to the Storytime Pup Show. I'm so glad you came by to play. I love when my friends come by to play, and you're one of my friends. Are you ready to have fun? Let's see what we're going to do today. Magic Marker, show us what we're going to do today. Yay! It's storybook time! We love storybook time! Today I'm going to be reading you Peter and the Whimper Whinies, written by Cheryl S. Cannon. Illustrations, book design, and cover art by the Calpart team. In a house in the forest all covered with vines, lived a very small rabbit who did nothing but whine. He'd whine and he'd cry from morning till night, and nothing that anyone did would be right. He'd cry and he'd whine and he'd whine and he'd cry, till his mother said, Peter, I want you to try. To stop all that whining and unpleasant noise, go take a nap or go play with your toys. If you can't stop that whining, I very much fear that the old whimper whinies will look for you here. You'll go live with them in a land far away, where you'll join them in whining and crying all day. But Peter was selfish and cranky and cross. He wouldn't play games unless he was the boss. He'd whine and he'd cry till he got his own way. Then he'd yell at his sister who didn't want to play. His mother was fixing his dinner one night when she heard Peter screaming and it gave her a fright. She rushed to the table and found Peter there, whining and crying and standing up on his chair. My sister has more soup than I in her bowl. She took too much jelly to put on her roll. She's got more than I do. It's really not fair, whined Peter while sliding back down in his chair. That's it, said his mother. You're going to bed. Perhaps you can think about what I have said. You must stop this whining and crying you do, for no one will ever want to be around you. And standing on chairs is not safe as you know. Your mother knows best, and I say it is so. You need to be happy and pleasant and bright, so think about that. And she turned out the light. So Peter lay back on his soft little bed, while thoughts of his mother's words danced in his head. He looked out the window and saw a full moon, and wished he weren't punished and stuck in his room. I wish I was out there, he thought, and he sighed, and all of a sudden he was standing outside. He looked at the woods in the distance and thought, I wonder what's out there, so though he'd been taught. To never go into the woods all alone, Peter went hippity-hop from his home. He went hippity-hoppity-hippity-hop, at the edge of the woods, he found a big rock. When he stopped for a rest, he felt something quite queer. Something was tugging on his little ear. It tugged on his left ear and then on the right. And when Peter looked up, he saw a strange sight. He saw an old man who was dressed all in green, with a big tall green hat that was not very clean. His eyes were all swollen and puffy and red, and his gigantic nose stuck right out of his head. Peter, though frightened, just said, Who are you? I've heard all this whining and crying you do, whined the strange little man with the great big red nose, who was all dressed in green in his strange little clothes. I'm a whimper whiny, a whimper whiny man, and I've come to take you to whimper wine land. But Peter thought, No way, and he pulled his ears free, hopping into the forest and under a tree. He waited in hiding, saw no one appear, so he wiggled his nose and he waggled his ear. And not feeling anything holding him tight, he hopped down the trail and into the night. He hopped around a bend in the trail and he found a circle of whiny men sitting on the ground. They were sitting cross-legged, those strange little men, rocking back and forth, back and forth over again. What are you doing? Peter said with surprise, as he saw their red noses and weepy wet eyes. We're crying a pond, whined a whimper whiny man. We're whining and crying as hard as we can. You're crying a what? Peter thought he'd heard wrong. He was tired and thirsty from hopping so long. But the whiny man told Peter over again, We're crying a pond for the ducks to swim in. We have so many tears in whimper wine land. We've made a small pond where there used to be sand. Peter wasn't too sure what he thought about that, but he saw a large table and chairs, so he sat for he hoped he could get something to drink and to eat. The strange little men suddenly got to their feet and rushed to the table, knocking into each other, and kicking and shoving, they pushed one another. They grabbed all the food with their dirty small hands and stuffed in their mouths all the food they could cram. 
They were licking and smacking and spitting out seeds, eating as fast as they could in their terrible greed. They ate with their hands and they gobbled their food. Those whimper whiny men were impossibly rude. One climbed on the table, one stood on a chair. They talked with their mouthfuls, they seemed not to care. That Peter was sitting with nothing to eat, not eating some vegetables, much less some meat. After a while, someone shoved him a glass. It seemed to be milk. Peter sipped it and gasped. This milk is sour. It really does stink. It's curdled and gross. It's not fit to drink. One whiny man whined with a sigh and a sob, wiping grease from his chin with his sleeve like a slob. But at Peter, it seems that you don't understand. Everything's sour in Whimper Wine Land. We cry our salt tears into everything here, so everything's spoiled and sour, I fear. Well, Peter thought he had had enough of this place. These men with no manners, their food a disgrace. They're whining and crying, the way they did shout. He knew what his mother had been talking about. He got up from his chair and crept softly away. He thought if he got home, he would never stray. He would never go into the woods all alone. If only, if only he could find his way home. So Peter went hippity-hippity-hop. He kept running hopping and didn't dare stop. He promised himself to be happy and good when he came to that rock at the edge of the wood. He saw his house waiting. It was not far to go. So he started hip-hopping, but then stubbed his toe. And Peter woke up in his own little bed. He had only been hopping in dreams in his head. His mother was calling him, saying to rise. There was sunshine outside and the bluest of skies. His mother said, Peter, it's a beautiful day. I do hope you're going to be happy today. Do you think he was? The end. I thought that was a great book. What did you think? I sure hope you aren't a whimper whiny. You don't want to end up in whimper whiny land. <laughs> a great big thank you to Cheryl Cannon and the Cowpart team for that great book. You can read more about Cheryl Cannon and her books by looking in the description below. Wasn't that great? I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click on the thumbs up button below. Moms, dads, and adults, please leave your and your children's comments below. This way we know what shows you like, so we can make more of them. There's one more thing that we always do at the end of every show. Magic glasses! Magic glasses lets me see some of my friends who came to play. Maybe I'll see you today. Magic glasses, that's the way. Show me my friends who came to play. Okay, now everyone smile and wave and let me see if I see you. I see Brayden and Alexis and Parker, Angelo. Well, hi, Peter and Marcia. And there's Philip and Vanessa and Avery and Sasha and Phoenix and Sylvia and Taylor. I see all of my friends waving at me. Did I see you today? If not, maybe I'll see you next time. Make sure you check back soon, because we'll be adding a bunch of new shows every week. Make sure you have an adult. Click on the subscribe button right here. That way you won't miss any of the fun. Moms and dads, make sure you visit the Storytime Pup website to sign up for our great free giveaways. We have giveaways for books, CDs, DVDs, t-shirts, and other great stuff. Sign up just once, and you'll have a chance for all the drawings to come. And kids, don't forget to tell your friends about Storytime Pup. And before I go, here's a great big hug for all my friends. Thanks for stopping by to play. I'll see you real soon. Bye now.